Dr. Philip Freeman, I'll find out how he likes to be addressed, he has a clinical a licensed clinical psychologist and psychotherapist. He has been participating. Psycho. He has been practicing. I'm sorry, doctor. I'm practicing psychotherapy and healing for 30 years plus in the Philadelphia suburbs. Dr. Freeman is on the adjacent faculty of the Institute for Transpersonal Psychology, a diplomat in comprehensive. What comprehend? Well, energy psychology, as well as the executive director of the director of the Foundation for Well-Being, and I'm really looking forward to it. And Dr. Freeman, are you there? I am here, uh, Maureen. <laughs> Hi. You know, how would you like me to address you? <laughs> In your name? Who you want? Phil, Dr. Friedman. Uh, anything that you're <laughs> Do you have any preferences? Phil, fine. Or Dr. Friedman, whatever you like. Well, you don't have any preferences. Can I say Dr. Friedman, Ph.D.? (laughs) I'll I'll call you. How about if I just call you? (laughs) I mean, really, I I am asking with all the the most respect that I can because some people don't like to be called certain things. (laughs) But, you know, you are a doctor and you should, you know, be very, I mean, I'd be pushing those (laughs) those degrees all over town. But I'm really happy that you're here and a warm welcome to our show. And I've been looking forward to the show. And, you know, um, back when we debuted this this radio show, which was May 2010, I'm pretty sure. I'm I'll, Well, I'm going to have to say this, you guys. I am the one of the orig- only original from the beginning of the show, <laughs> radio show. But my first sh- um, show was on forgiveness, as a matter of fact. So it's almost like I'm coming full circle around years later uh, to you. Uh, okay. So this is this is very special to me because I picked that show for my first show years ago for a good reason, and I'm still trying to struggle with it. So I wanted to ask you, um, why did you know, the book is called and the re- I named the show after your book, The Forgiveness Solution. So uh, everybody that's listening, so you'll know why that's called. And he said, okay. So why did you write this book? The Forgiveness Solution, and how did you come to write it? Well, actually, it goes back, uh, believe it or not, 30 or 40 years before I got into forgiveness. I had some powerful, actually, psychic and spiritual experiences that started me on kind of a search into yoga and meditation, parapsychology, things like that, curling photography, and uh, actually a friend of mine was president of the local Delaware Valley Society of Parapsychology and invited a gentleman named Doug Dean to give a presentation on curling and photography, which I was very interested in and actually doing a little myself. And at the end of the presentation, he says to me, oh, I want to talk about something um, completely different now. He says, I want to talk about some uh, writings, some child writings that came into my possession uh, called The Course in Miracles, and he read these uh, 50 Principles of Miracles that starts off this 1,200-page set of writings called The Course in Miracles, and it just uh, had uh, chills that went through my spine, chills that went through my spine when I listened to these Principles of Miracles, and it turns out I wasn't uh, looking for forgiveness at the time, but it turns out that the main theme of A Course in Miracles has to do with forgiveness. So I quickly started to apply forgiveness to my own life. There was some family conflicts, work conflicts going on at the time. And then I started applying it to the work with the uh, couples and families that I was seeing regularly back then. And then uh, over the years, I started to uh, integrate it, the forgiveness work, I started to integrate it with the other disciplines that I had uh, learn on cognitive behavior therapy, energy therapy, uh, spiritual healing, etc. And then at some point I uh, decided that it would be a, uh, a really good thing to pull it together and uh, to write a very practical, this is like a practical workbook called The Forgiveness Solution and it integrates many of these different disciplines but the core theme is that there's one core problem underneath all other problems and that's unforgiveness, judgments and grievances against ourselves or others and one core solution which is forgiveness. That's the short story. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good, I like that, that's a good summation of what you, I mean I understood <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did because 
Well, because like I said, this is a close to, well, I think it's close to many people's hearts. And being in the work that we do, you know, I'm always talking about forgiveness, but I have issues myself with heavy well. Were you always a forgiving person? <laughs> Or did you learn yeah, it yourself? I was, uh, you know, I was not always a forgiving person. Like, you know, most people, I grew up with a certain number of uh, judgments and blame of myself and other people who were doing things that I didn't like, you know. And uh, as I said, it wasn't really until I came across A Course of Miracles that the idea of forgiveness even seriously entered my mind. But it's a uh, very psycho-spiritual uh, book and principle. And then... Uh, I started applying it. There are 365 lessons on, in A Course in Miracles, and there's quite a few lessons in my book. So I gradually, like most people, learn to uh, develop some level of mastery uh, on forgiveness over many years. Actually, it was 1977 when I came across in Course in Miracles. I didn't actually start writing this book until, um, you know, four or five years ago. So. It was a long process, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with the Course in Miracles. As a matter of fact, it's it's from many years ago, and uh, I can understand. Well, I'll go on to the next one. You know, um, and, and forgiveness is is hot these days. I think that it it was hot <laughs> back in the day, but I do feel that more and more people are learning. It's a very important part of our spiritual development is where my my view is on it anyway and um so as you know many people are talking about it and the dalai lama and uh, desmond tutti is it is that do i say it right tutti yes desmond tutti uh so they won some big awards by one of the uh, major philanthropic organizations for the uh you know, they're talking um, about forgiveness and the work that they have done in the, in the field of forgiveness. Um, so, you know, just about everybody, you know, forgiveness is uh, applies to people personally, relationally, marriedly, family, and, of course, spiritually. And, so it covers and, that, and that universally, really, isn't it a universal? I mean, it's... Yes, and, of course, you know, when I said spiritually, I mean universally. And, you know, things happen all the time in our lives and in the world that uh, we call them forgiveness opportunities, you know. <laughs> so what is the core... Th the core theme of the forgiveness solution that you that you came up with here. Well, the core theme is that there's one core problem, unforgiveness, which is also defined as as uh, judgments, grievances, and attack thoughts that we have against ourselves or other people or God or groups. And one core solution, which is uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness is uh, letting go of those judgments, grievances, uh, attack thoughts, and all of the emotions of anger, resentment, hurt, bitterness, um, guilt, uh, frustration, fear, etc., that we experience in learning how to develop more peace, love, joy, happiness, and harmony in our relationships, let alone a connection with Source or God or whatever you want to call it for yourself. Right. So so I, I wanted to ask you, with yours, with your personal process of when you were writing Forgiveness Solution, were you at, a, at the point where you had been able to actually... You know, I, you know, people always talk about, for, oh, yeah, I forgive, I forgive. But a lot of times, I know for me, it, it feels like it hasn't happened really. Or I haven't done the, it just doesn't feel like it, even though I say I forgive. Well, you know, you're truly forgiven when you're at peace. With, <laughs> uh, whatever has happened or... You know, let's say someone did something that you didn't like and you felt hurt or bitterness or resentment or you felt guilty about something, you know, and it's like a uh, psychological carpet sweeper. When, when you're at peace with these people in these situations in yourself, then you know you're forgiven until then. It's still a process that's unfolding. And we it's can learn this, like cause in your book, you, you do indicate that it shows we need to, it's a learning thing, how to forgive. We It's a learning. Is that yes, so? Forgiveness is a, is a learning process because I distinguish in the book between two general paths, the kind of uh, 
path of the ego, which uh, doesn't want to forgive, and the path of the uh, higher self or the soul that uh, can help guide you to uh, forgiveness. So um, it's definitely a process, and it's a learning process. And for some people, it takes more time than others, depending on you know, their life experiences and uh, the good teachers or teachers or books they have available and how motivated they are. Right. So what about the three <clears throat> you mentioned in your book? Uh, there's uh, three, is it three key areas of forgiveness we can well, learn? I'm referring to forgiving yourself, forgiving others, and forgiving circumstances, that, you know, that come up in your life. I mean, there are others, like forgiving God and ethnic groups, but the three main ones are forgiving yourself, forgiving others, you know, like uh, your parents, your siblings, your spouse, your kids, your in-laws, your boss, your colleagues, <laughs> all those people, <laughs> and, and uh, all of the circumstances that come up well, sometimes unexpectedly in life. Well, can do you think, can people really forgive, like I was saying earlier, or do they just... Per- unconsciously pretend to forgive well, you know some people pretend to forgive but uh, you know if you do the exercises and processes in my book there's many different tools and techniques that I've pulled together from different uh, traditions in my book in, a, in an easily understandable way if you practice them consistently then uh, you can learn to forgive and develop more peace and love and joy and happiness in your life and healing and harmony in your relationships. So, for example, I had someone that came to see me a few months ago and, uh, you know, he was screaming at his kids all the time. He was battling with his wife, was threatening to leave. He was hitting the walls, you know, so he wasn't hitting people. He was fighting with his boss and his brother all the time you know he was like a wreck and uh, through uh, working with me with these different uh, tools and techniques you know he uh, he learned to relate dramatically different with his kids so that you know by changing his attitudes and the way he talked to him and uh, now they have a harmonious relationship he's getting along really well with his wife um, now he gets along so well with his boss at work that all the other people at work come to him to kind of be a mediator between them and, and the boss and his relationship with his brother that probably started it all from a lot of hurt and pain uh, from feeling disrespected and put down as he grew up. You know, that's been transformed. So, you know, over a period of months, three, four, five months, he's completely transformed all of that, and he's forgiven himself so that all the guilt he was carrying around, well, and all the anger and hurt and bitterness is all dissolved and disappeared. Now he's at peace and a uh, very happy person. So the thing is inner peace, inner peace. You know, there's something I, I'm, I'm looking at here, um, something I, I pulled off the questions, of course, to ask you, but uh, there's four of us on on the show here. There's four hosts. <laughs> we have one of those, like, the view thing. And uh, Brenda, who's an Italian, <laughs> she, you say something, do people forgive but never forget? And she's always talking about, you know, us Italians, we may forgive but we never forget. What? <laughs> Brenda, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm married to an Italian, so I. (laughs) It's just a a kind of thing, and I can't explain it. It's not like maybe it's a thing of trust or respect. You know, it's not so much that we don't forgive them. You know, for for doing what they're doing. It's like it's almost like you know that we don't forget it because we're on the alert that they might do it again. See what I mean? That type of thing. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if that's would classify as total forgiveness. forgiveness. I think that phrase, you know, I forgive, but I never forget. I think that's only partial forgiveness. When, when you're truly forgiven, that sense of vulnerability is gone. That that emotional reactivity is gone. You're truly at peace when you're with these people and when you think about these people. And uh, so either you either you do forget or. The emotional reactivity and the emotional charge that you experience when you're around them or you're thinking about them is gone. So it's um, so it's it's only a partial forgiveness then, huh? <laughs> like ninety percent, and the other ten percent still oh, kind of hanging partial, out there. It's only a partial forgiveness. <laughs> uh, okay, well I'm guilty then. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, you well, know, I think I'm well, it was too. You know, in technical terms, neuroscience terms, when when you haven't forgiven, when there's a lot of uh, resentment, bitterness, hurt, and all that, the the uh, limbic system and the amygdala in the brain is very quickly activated, and and the prefrontal cortex is dampened down. So when you're truly forgiven, what happens is the emotional centers of the brain, like the amygdala and the limbic system, they're no longer activated when you think about her in the presence of the others and the prefrontal cortex is the mental centers of the brain they, they are stimulated and they're resourceful now so you're actually changing uh the wiring in the brain when you've truly forgiven you know when you when, when you forgive but you haven't forgotten then there's still emotional charge <laughs> there in the emotional centers of the brain that hasn't been you know, dissolve. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, my daughter's a neuroscience. She'll be graduating UCSD. She's a neuroscience major, and she's always getting on my butt about about that. I really need to for family members and such, and she says it just doesn't, you know, work if you don't do it. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, it takes I, a lot of practice. You know, it takes a lot of motivation and practice. Then. And and you know who are the who are some of the well this is a good one who are the people that we need to forgive the most usually well, I, think, I think we've been talking about you know your, your <laughs> parents first your siblings second your spouse your kids your in laws uh, your relatives you know your bosses people you work with you know really anybody where there's an emotional charge which are usually the people that you're closest to you know Unless well that makes sense completely but. Uh, well, you know, growth, um, growth opportunities, you know. But you know, I, I'm wondering, like, f- I'm just going to go my my personal intake. Everybody, just is just me. You know, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but uh, like, you know, Brenda talks about, you know, forgive and never forget. When some people that you might f- you may forgive or feel that you have worked it through to forgive, but there are people that are ongoing throughout your maybe family. Uh, and they continually do things <laughs> that are unforgivable <laughs> or they they are very challenging, let's put it that way. Can it make yeah, it very difficult very to use some of these techniques? Forgiveness opportunities, you know? Yeah. In your life to help you to practice forgiveness. That's true. You can that's a good way of looking at it. I like that. I like that. Okay, I'll go with that one. <laughs> but uh so what are some of the techniques that you can rec- recommend to help us forgive? And are these different than ones who recommend, who are recommended by other authors out there for on forgiveness? Well, there's about 10 categories of techniques I'll just briefly mention. And you want to ask me more about one of them, you can. But there are uh, positive affirmations. There's uh, forgiveness guided imagery. There's like 14 different ones in my book and a lot of affirmation. There's teaching stories. There's a lot of like energy techniques. I call them positive pressure point techniques. There's meditation and mindfulness. There's practicing gratitude and compassion. There's journaling. There's certain spiritual healing exercises, there's cognitive and attitudinal um, behavior change exercises, there's a lot of different things that are available and uh, in my book and, you know, of course, other places as well. And um, so some of the most powerful ones are some of the energy techniques, like uh, the emotional freedom technique and the positive pressure point techniques. These help to dissolve a lot of the hurt, anger, bitterness, and guilt. And um, I have a lot of couples, for example, that come in where one person is having or had an affair, you know, and there's always a lot of feelings of anger, hurt, bitterness, betrayal, resentment, the whole nine yards there, you know. So there's a lot of forgiveness work that needs to be done. If that, those relationships are going to be healed, you know. But um, energy techniques... Forgiveness guided imagery techniques are really good. Certain types of mindfulness techniques are good. Journaling is good. Affirmations you know, are good. Uh, doctor, I, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the major benefits of forgiving? And does it really increase our happiness? Why not? Peace, love, and joy, and health, and well-being. I know what your answer is going to be. <laughs> Well, one of the things I do in my work as a psychotherapist is I'm very big on empirically tracking change. So I give these uh, 
these measures of uh, peace, happiness, love, joy, well-being, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion to my clients on a regular basis. And you see when people have learned to forgive, plus I have several really good forgiveness skills, so as people learn to forgive, all of these qualities, peace, love, joy, happiness, well-being improve, their relationships improve, and frequently their health improves. Like high blood pressure can go down or uh, migraines can dissolve, the stomach problems can disappear, tension in the shoulders and back, back problems can dissolve. A lot of health, there's a lot of research that shows now that um, many areas of actual physical health improve as you forgive, as well as, of course, your relationships with your spouse, your kids, and other assorted people. So it, really, a lot of areas of your life can improve and if you do it a lot, a lot of people connect with a deeper spiritual source, um, like God, or whatever higher self or divine person. Or being, yeah, I call him God. <laughs> I call him God. You know, uh, <clears throat> Doctor, one of my co-hosts, Bobby, because I told you there's four of us, he has, uh, if you don't mind, he wanted to ask something, if that's okay. Sure. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, Bobby. Hi. I'm good. Uh, I just wanted you to address your opinion. A lot of people have a rough time forgiving because I think that to them it means that it, it has to do with a right or wrong situation. In other words, if I forgive this person, that means that they may go out and do this to somebody else or, or it's not right what they did or it isn't fair and, and things like that. Can you address you know, what, what it is that you believe about forgiveness and the whole right or wrong issue. I think, I think a lot of people get held up on that. A lot of people ask that question, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my field, we say, well, you can, be, you can be right or you can be happy, but you can't have both, you know? <laughs> Decide what you want, right or free. <laughs> you gotta be. You can choose to be right, in which case you'll be right, but you'll also most likely be miserable. Or you could choose to be happy and free. So uh, I'm looking at a diagram right here in my office here, which is two paths: the path of unhappiness, unforgiveness, and being right, or the and darkness, or the path of being happy, being free, being you know, the path of light or the path of darkness. You might say. So. Uh, now, of course, it doesn't mean that you uh, want to let people, like, take advantage of you and abuse you. And, you know, you have to set certain kinds of limits in relationships that are uh, healing and uh, beneficial to both parties. Um, so you don't want to be a doormat. You don't have to be a doormat just because you're being forgiving, which is sometimes implied in that question, you know. One, it's an attitudinal thing, and then it's also a behavioral. Uh, did I answer your question, or is there another? Absolutely. No, yep, I just wanted your opinion on it, and uh, absolutely, it, it, it's, uh, that's what we've talked about before, and, and I do like the phrase that I've used myself in workshops, you can be right or you can be free, and uh, <laughs> so that's good. Thank you very much, sir. Now, there's another thing that's kind of implied between the lines in the question there, and that is, or maybe in this whole discussion, that is when uh, you're considering how to forgive, it's uh, always good to turn the whole process over to a higher power of force or a Holy Spirit or just some divine inner guidance or something like that, because there is a part, a place within all of us that's... Um, wiser and more spiritually advanced that can help us accelerate that forgiveness process and help us do it more rapidly and effectively than if we don't invoke that uh, higher power of force. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, thank you, Bobby. That was nice that you brought this up. I appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Phil. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> thing. Right Dr. Dr. Phil. <laughs> Uh, how is, it's probably even better. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Um, how is your general approach to forgiveness? Oh, I already asked. Well, no, I didn't ask you this yet. Your general approach to forgiveness different from the approach of many of your colleagues? Uh, that's a good question. So a lot of my colleagues start with the assumption that there are victims and victimizers and there are 
perpetrators and uh, abusers and the abused and uh, and that there's sin in the world and evil in the world. Well, none of that exists in my approach. That that's there are errors and mistakes that people make, and every communication is either a call for love or a communication of love. But in my approach. These labels of uh, victim and victimizer and perpetrator and and victim. This is all what we call the I call in my approach the ego's conceptualization of life and the ego path. But in the more psycho spiritual approach that I have, uh, that doesn't exist. It, everyone is either coming from fear and making mistakes and errors that are calls for love. And we look at people through different lenses, you might say. So we're not forgiving sins or forgiving evil or forgiving... Um, we're, we're seeing that, you know, people are vulnerable and people are always calling consciously or subconsciously. They're calling for help and they're calling for love, even when they've done things that are, uh, let's call them, unresourceful. And people sometimes experience as harmful. So we approach us with love. Right. You know, forgiveness brings out... I have a sign right here on my office. It says, love flourishes where there is gratitude and forgiveness. So, first of all, that brings in the whole important area of gratitude. Gratitude and forgiveness are like heads and tails on a coin, but the more gratitude and forgiveness you have, the more love flourishes. So... uh, uh, forgiveness and gratitude are going to bring up love in your heart and compassion in your heart and you can't separate out love from the work on uh, forgiveness because they go together like you know heads and tails yeah you know um, we're going to take a, a quick uh, commercial uh, from our sponsor psychicaccess.com and we'll be right back with Dr. Phil <laughs> Okay, I like that. Good. A new era in psychic services has begun. Psychicaccess.com. You can connect with our psychic advisors by telephone or chat 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All of our psychic advisors are interviewed, fully verified, and accuracy tested, assuring you quality service. We are living in some very troubled times right now. More and more, the world's problems are affecting us on a personal level. You don't have to deal with this alone. Our highly accurate psychics, caring advisors, and talented mediums can help with situations you are currently experiencing and can let you know what the future may hold for you. All new customers get a free six-minute reading. All you have to do is register. Why not visit us now and get a free reading at psychicaccess.com. back talking to Dr. Phil. <laughs> I just kind of like that. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Anyway, no, uh, we were talking about like why forgive. <laughs> I, you know, I know all about why forgive. It's, it, it's, it is liberating. And I, and I have been trying to get to that place for I don't know how long ongoing. And I, I, it's so toxic not to forgive for me. Well, it's toxic for everybody not to forgive. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I guess I'm being very honest You're about myself alone. here. You're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, let's go into this a bit because, you know, forgiveness is related to compassion, gratitude. We, you know, we are just talking about that contentment. And forgiveness is not to dismiss anything or what anybody did. Forgiveness is for the individual that needs to forgive. Is that correct? Um, it's partially correct, and I must admit that I often have emphasized it that way because uh, it is a way to uh, relate to people and motivate them to begin the forgiveness process. But forgiveness is just as much a interpersonal or relational process as it is a personal process. In other words, at the highest level, everyone you see out there is like your brother or sister, and at a very high level of forgiveness, they, they are like your savior, you might say, that they have the capacity to to bless you and to be blessed. 
in the process of forgiveness. So as you forgive other people, you are creating, uh, you're eliminating the separateness that exists between you and other people, and you're allowing a process of blessing to take place. So it's a relationship process as well as an individual process. Oh, I like that because we're collect. I mean, I'm all for union. I love union, Carl Jung, about that we're all collectively connected, and and so what you're saying it is, uh, it's a it's a you know collective process. Then is what you're saying is what I hear hear you saying. Well, they're saying, of course, in miracles that all minds are joined at a, at a higher level. All minds are already mm-hmm. joined. So every thought, every feeling that you have in relationship to another person is automatically connects with the mind of that other person. So mm-hmm. you forgive someone and then you bless someone, you are uh, already connecting with it. Brings about a sense of oneness at the highest level and. And so that's why it can be a very spiritual process now. Not everyone starts out seeing it that way, but that is the highest level of forgiveness to see. Basically, to see that the other person at it, at it not at the ego level, which is where you're feeling all that hurt, guilt, resentment, but at a, at a spiritual level where we're all uh, connected, that other person is like the Christ, the Buddha. Mm-hmm. Divine light, you know. So you have to learn to go to a higher level in order to experience that and to see that. But that's the highest level of forgiveness. It's like a ladder. I like to talk in terms of the ladder of forgiveness. Now we all start at the bottom of the ladder, but as you get to the higher level of the ladder, you can see that your brother, your sister. I'm using the word generically, is is the Christ, is the Buddha, is the divine light, is in that sense your savior. And it's a great opportunity for personal, relational, and spiritual growth. And it's there in your life for that purpose. There's no accident who comes into your life from this perspective, you think? Mm, I agree. I agree with that. You're absolutely right. There's a lesson to be learned with somebody that... Well, you know, Dr. Phil, I'm wondering, how could you tell somebody listening, we have a chat room here too, and other people, you know, and our listeners, how could you, or can you give any insight in, to the basics for somebody that's uh, not read your book yet, and uh, wants to try to get to a point where they're going to forgive a sibling, let's say, for something that goes way back, <laughs> ongoing, what would be the the process or the first thing advice or insight you could give to that person to begin? Well, I'll I'll just teach a very little simple uh, energy technique, okay? Now, here's what you do. You take a few fingers on, on, say, your right hand, and you're going to tap on the side of your left hand. We call that the karate chop point, like where you do a karate. You tap continuously on the side of the hand, and then you say, even though I have this uh, this hurt, this disappointment, this resentment, this bitterness, whatever words you're feeling, I accept myself deeply and profoundly. And I am a good, confident, and magnificent person. You repeat that a few times. Even though I have this hurt, anger, bitterness, resentment, guilt, I accept myself deeply and profoundly, and I am a good, confident, and magnificent person. Then you say, you keep tapping, and you say, I love myself unconditionally, despite my problems, limitations, and challenges, and despite all these feelings I'm having. I love myself unconditionally, And then you keep tapping, and then you say, and I am entitled to miracles. Say that three times. I am entitled to miracles. I am definitely entitled to miracles. And a miracle is like a shift in in perception and experience that allows love to flow into your life. Now, those are just some initial steps, but you wanted me to help people to start somewhere, so that's one way to do it. No, I think that's a great, that's absolutely great. Um, When am I, in fact, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I do want, somebody has a question, and I think it's Steve. (laughs) Thank you, Maureen. I do. uh, Well, it's a fascinating show. Thank you. I I wanted to just explain something that I experienced and then ask your view about it. I was in a relationship eight years, and I left that relationship very hurt and very angry, and I 
I work in metaphysics, so I do a lot of energy work. Uh-huh. And I feel as though, you know, I've developed a strong energy. And I learned four years after my separation that my partner hadn't worked since we separated. He'd never been able to find a job. And I felt upset about that and I did a lot of work on forgiveness Uh and once I'd done that really detailed work on forgiveness he found a job and I wondered if energetically my negativity or my anger may have been holding him back and I found it happened after my second relationship as well a shorter period of time but I was angry about the end of the relationship and upset with my partner and learned that he couldn't find a job either. And when I did the forgiveness work, he did. So my question is, do we hold others back? Does our anger cause blockages for other people? Excellent question, excellent question. I would say yes, because, you know, all minds are joined, energetically all minds are joined. And uh, I found many times when, you know, if I was upset with someone or something and I practiced forgiveness and... You know, and nothing was happening in the relationship or in some aspect, something important, and I forgive him when I was at peace, then I get at peace, and, you know, a few hours later I get a call, I get an email from the Internet, you know, inviting me to get together or something like that. It's like something shifted in the universe or in the relationship, as you're, you know, you're talking about. As soon as you truly forgive and you're at peace, and so, yes, there's an energetic shift that takes place, and this can take place... uh, um, anywhere in the world, in any relationship. In fact, in the Course in Miracles, there's one great lesson that says, uh, "When you're healed, you're not healed alone." Many, many people all over the country that you have never even met and never will met are healed along with you. That's the power of forgiveness. So you may have healed other people as well as as uh, this person. Well, wonderful. Thank you. A great, great, a great, great, uh, great one, Steve. You know, Bobby has a question. If that's, what, I'm, I'm letting my co just go for it. Bobby, go on. <laughs> um, well, it's not so much a question as to so from from the the place that you teach um, and help guide people towards forgiveness. For you, what are maybe some of the, the, the first couple of things that a person can begin to do when they think that they're even ready to start forgiving. You know what I mean? There has to be that, okay, I think I'm ready now. <laughs> so what would you recommend, like the first couple of steps for somebody to, to, uh, to be in that place? Well, honestly, of course, I'm biased, of course, but I would have them, you know, read my book and do the exercises. I mean, every client of mine, I give them, literally give them a copy of my book, and I tell them to read, you know, two or three chapters at a time, bring do the exercises and bring them in. Now, having said that, I mean, honestly, that's what I think is most helpful, but, you know, uh, that little exercise I just gave is just the, one of the introductory steps. I teach that to all my clients at the end of the first session. I go into it a little bit more detail, and then there's a series of follow-up uh, techniques, energy techniques, like uh, you tap on the side of your hand and you say, uh, anything is possible. I'm entitled to miracles. Uh, miracles are happening. Miracles come from love and forgiveness. <laughs> So you tap on the side of your hand, that's an energy point on the side of your hand, and you repeat that phrase. Anything is possible. I'm entitled to miracles. Miracles are happening. Miracles come from love and forgiveness. So I tell people to practice these exercises like five or more times a day, five or more times a day. I call this the psychological uplifter. And uh, this is a way to get started. Now, in my book, there's a lot of... You know, there's a lot of story. That's another thing that's actually really helpful. There's a lot of really uplifting stories that of either my clients or stories that I've, uh, you know, other people have told about the forgiveness process. And when you when you read about stories of other people who have done it in challenging situations, it serves as like a model for you and uh, that helps guide you along the way. So it's good to, you can just go on the internet and put in forgiveness stories in Google or something or other, and you'll read about a lot of uh, fascinating stories of other people who have done 
the forgiveness process in areas related to, you know, ones that are challenging for you or me. So I have yeah, this guided imagery that's... process. I have 14 <laughs> guided imagery forgiveness exercises that you can, uh, you know, purchase off my website. That's another one. These are excellent forgiveness guided imagery exercises. They really help a lot, too. They're in the book as well. Um. What about those that you have found that say, well, I've, I've forgiven that. Have you run across people? Well, I definitely have forgiven, uh, let's say, a sister. And you find that by no means have they. <laughs> and <clears throat> they well, really people, feel otherwise. You know, people They're convinced. Themselves sometimes, you know. So, but... Um... You know, like that example I told of that gentleman who came in with his, all this anger towards his kids and his wife, etc. But, you know, he knew that he had truly forgiven because all the people around him started telling him how different he was and how calm he was now and what a different person he was. When you get that kind of feedback, you know that something has truly happened. But if you don't get some kind of positive feedback from others, then you're just, you know, pretending or in denial or deluding yourself. Or oblivious. <laughs> Or oblivious, or oblivious to it. Right. Do you or actually oblivious. have forg- yeah. uh, so, uh, Well, uh, Dr. Phil, I was wondering, as far as I, 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 I do get that forgiveness is related very much so to spiritual transformation, for me anyway, because it's been draining me spiritually when I have not been very forgiving, unfor- when I'm unforgiving. And I think that it affects my work, it affects me, it affects... It affects me, <laughs> me, me, me. It really does, and that's what is this all. Forgiveness is not so much for the other person, although, like Steve brought up a good point about how that worked for him. But it's for the individual to move on. Well, you, you know, that's another good point. Until you forgive, and you can't move on. Like you're stuck. You know, it's like you're trapped. As soon as you forgive, you can move on, you know, you can let go of the past, let go of the emotional pain and move on in your life. Well, and look, in the example he gave, when he forgave, then his his partner was able to move on. So not only was, you know, could he move on, but his partner was able to move on. So, so... yeah, that yeah, was pretty enlightening, Steve, thing. by the way. Yeah, that story is great. But also it has powerful relationship consequences. <clears throat> is there anything you know, that you find is not f- forgivable? Personally, no. But, okay. you know, I know there are plenty of people who would, <laughs> who would disagree with that. But, uh, you know, I, I was just reading this morning. Well, actually, not this, this afternoon. I was just reading this afternoon about, uh, you know, people who had... Uh, been part of the whole Aurora, Colorado thing in the movies, you know, and one person who survived it, and he was already forgiving the, uh, you know, the the murderer, you know, and uh, he was telling, you know, why he was willing to forgive, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty powerful, challenging situation, you know, and uh, same thing in, uh, you know, in Newtown, Connecticut, you know, it's like there are people who are deep into forgiveness who are willing to uh, forgive some of the more, you know, horrendous things, seemingly horrendous things. Um, So I'm of the opinion that, uh, well, my brother-in-law, he died in a hotel fire where 25 people were killed back in 1980, and they said it was arson. This is my wife's brother, you know, so it took a little while, to say the least to forgive in that situation, but it is possible and sometimes, you know, it takes a lot of time in the in the more difficult situations. It can take months or years, but it can be done. Right. But it is an attitude. It is a shift in perception and a shift in attitude. And it does bless a lot of people when you finally come to forgiveness. Well, you know, that's a good point because, because you just brought up your personal story there uh, about uh, the person, I, like I said, forgiveness is a very 
the show is very uh, personal to me. <laughs> well, of course. But um, like I said, the first show I ever did, we debuted this radio show years ago, was on forgiveness. And the person that I brought on was a woman who her father killed her mother and married her aunt. And her story wow. was pretty intense. How could you forget? You know, that's just. Un- but right, she everyone, found. Right? But she found that she couldn't live. She couldn't be free to live her life until she was able to forgive. <clears throat> and right. she went through. It was very I challenging. Was about, the other one I was reading about today was, uh, you know, someone a drunk driver who killed two people and the mother. You know, first she was a lot of anger, hurt, bitterness, but over time she came to forgive the person who, uh, you know, killed her daughter and eventually uh, went to see him in jail and developed a relationship. You know, they were writing to each other and then went to visit him, and she ended up, you know, pleading with the judge to reduce his sentence from 22 years of life to half of that, which the judge did, you know, and then she came to care a lot about him. So even in the most difficult circumstances, it is possible, you know, to forgive, but, you know, obviously it's very challenging. Right, but also it's a very challenging need. (laughs) It's a very challenging need, right, but the benefits are enormous, you know. Yes, I I agree. Because it's it's liberating. A lot of people come in with uh, back problems, and as I said, migraine problems, heart problems, blood pressure problems. When they're forgiven, and all of that emotion is uh, dissolved, then their health problems uh, clear up. Yeah, and they get to live. (laughs) They They get get to to live. live They get to live, and they get to live longer, right? Yeah. Uh, do, well, Dr. Friedman, I, I, we're almost to the end of the interview, and I'd like to know if there's any last or anything you'd like to share if you're doing any workshops. I, we do have all your contact information, of course, but is there anything you'd like to, you know, tell us about, you know, in addition to your book? You, you're, you've written other books, too, I'm pretty well, sure, book yeah. and on creating well-being, but... Uh... Well, two things. I encourage people to go to my website, www.forgivenesssolution.com. And also, just as actually, since you arranged this, I discovered quite accidentally that the book is now available on audio through audible.com and Amazon and also through iTunes, where I downloaded it. Oh, great. I like audio. (laughs) I like audio. audio. That's fantastic. I didn't even know it was happening. And uh, my final quote is that more miracles come from forgiveness and gratitude than anything else. More miracles come from forgiveness and gratitude than anything else. I like that. That's lovely. I, 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 like, I like that. And, and I so, will, I, maybe I'll do that as my mantra when I'm do, working on my forgiveness stuff. I plan to read your, well, now it's on audio. I like audio. I, I plan to hear your, your book, definitely. And we have all the, uh, we have all that information, too, on your guest page. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but we have all the information to contact Dr. Friedman at, at the website, www.forgivenesssolution.com. And also, we have other, you have other, well, you can say it right now, your other uh, websites, too. You have two more, I think, don't you? Well, the two main websites are Philip Friedman, one Alan Philip and Friedman, F R I E D M I N dot com, and then the forgiveness one is the forgiveness solution dot com, and and you know the book and the audio tapes and all the good stuff can be uh, looked at or purchased there, plus a lot of uh, quotes and other interesting. You know, yeah, there, and course. also I I went to, I I spent a lot of time on the forgiveness um, solution dot com. There's a great amount of information about your book and everything else. It's it's really intense. It's really informative, everybody. So I would definitely check that out as well as we have your books um, listed on your guest page. And I really appreciate you coming on and talking to us to this evening. I appreciate your work and your... Thank you. Pat- I appreciate you inviting me. It was a pleasant surprise, and I was delighted to oh. do this. So thank you so much oh, for having me on the show. 
Well, it was a pleasant surprise that you joined us. <laughs> I really appreciate you joining us. Well, I, think I have this a is special something... affinity for spiritual people and psychic people. So, I, you know, when I saw the invitation, I knew I was in good company. You know? well, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I want to bring up real quick. Um, transpersonal. You say tra- my sister is a transpersonal psych- psychologist. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, a lot of people. Now, when I saw that, I go, well, a lot of people, well, don't use that much anymore, transpersonal, but you have quite a background, definitely. In, in addition to your spiritual uh, your spiritual self, but I, I really appreciate you writing this book, and now on audio, <laughs> so I can hear it. Yeah, now it's on audio, which is great, uh, and surprised me. But, um, you know, I know a lot of... Uh, psychics and spiritual people and mediums and all those good things so uh, I always feel in good company when I have the opportunity to interact or talk with uh, people like yourself. Likes of us, huh? <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Well, thank you, and Dr. Friedman, for joining us. I understand that term, empath, very well. Empath, empath. It's, it's totally torment. <laughs> I can feel. Sometimes it's great and sometimes it's like uh, torment, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, feeling a lot of but, stuff with others. But <clears throat> that's why I think forgiveness is such an important thing for me because I feel so much. Well, we all feel, but I mean, well, you know, right. well, I could go on with that in another show, but uh, so Dr. Freeman, thank you so much, and I wish you well, and I, I look forward to listening to your book on audio, absolutely, for me. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Freeman, and um, I wish you well, and I'll, I'm sure I'll talk to you again for help. Okay, great, wonderful. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Hello, my name is Res Miranda. If you're having relationship, career, or life issues, I'm inviting you to experience what it's like to have access to professional, highly accurate psychics and spiritual advisors you can trust to care and help you. Register now to get your free six-minute reading by telephone or chat. Get answers. Get access. Psychic access. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Psychicaccess.com. Dr. Philip Freeman, I'll find out how he likes to be addressed, he is a clinical, a licensed clinical psychologist and psychotherapist. He has been participating, psycho, he has been practicing, I'm sorry, doctor, I'm practicing psychotherapy and healing for 30 years plus in the Philadelphia suburbs. Dr. Freeman is on the adjacent faculty of the Institute for Transpersonal Psychology, a diplomat in comprehensive what comprehend well energy psychology as well as executive director of the director of the foundation for well-being and i'm really looking forward to it and dr freeman are you there i am here uh, maureen <laughs> hi you know how would you like me to address you <laughs> In the name? Anywhere you want. Phil, Dr. Friedman, uh, anything that you're Do you have any preferences? Fine. Or Dr. Friedman, whatever you like. Well, you don't have any preferences. Can I say Dr. Friedman, Ph.D.? (laughs) And then at some point I decided that it would be a a really good thing to pull it together and uh, to write a very practical, this is like a practical workbook called The Forgiveness Solution, and it integrates many of these different disciplines, but the core theme is that there's one core problem underneath all other problems, and that's unforgiveness, judgments and grievances against ourselves or others, and one core solution, which is forgiveness. That's the short story. It's <laughs> a good, that's a good, I like that, that's a good summation of what you, I mean, I understood <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did because, well, because like I said, this is a close to, well, I think it's close to many people's hearts. And being in the work that we do, you know, I'm always talking about forgiveness, but I have issues myself with, have you, well, were you always a forgiving person? <laughs> or did you learn yeah, it yourself? Was, uh, you know, I was not always a forgiving person. <laughs> I'll, I'll that's call you. How about if I just call you? Keep it short. <laughs> I, I mean, really, I, I am asking with all the, the most respect that I can because some people don't like to be called certain things. <laughs> but, you know, you are a doctor and you should, you know, be very, I mean, I'd be pushing those, 
those degrees all over town. But I, I'm really happy that you're here and a warm welcome to our show. Thank and you. I've been looking Thank forward you. to the I'm show. And, you know, um, back when we debuted this this radio show, which was May 2010, I'm pretty sure, I'm I'll, well, I'm going to have to say this, you guys. I am the one of the orig- only original from the beginning of the show, <laughs> radio show. But my first sh- um, show was on forgiveness, as a matter of fact. So it's almost like I'm coming full circle around years later uh, to you. Uh, okay. So this is this is very special to me because I picked that show for my first show years ago for a good reason, and I'm still trying to struggle with it. So I wanted to ask you... Um, Some child writings that came into my possession uh, called A Course in Miracles, and he read these uh, 50 principles of miracles that starts off this 1,200-page set of writings called The Course in Miracles, and it just uh, had uh, chills that went through my spine, chills that went through my spine when I listened to these principles of miracles, and it turns out I wasn't uh, looking for forgiveness at the time, but it turns out that the main theme of A Course in Miracles has to do with forgiveness. So I quickly started to apply forgiveness to my own life. There was some family conflicts, work conflicts going on at the time. And then I started applying it to the work with the uh, couples and families that I was seeing regularly back then. And then uh, over the years, I started to uh, integrate it, the forgiveness work. I started to integrate it with the other disciplines that I had uh, learn on cognitive behavior therapy, energy therapy, uh, spiritual healing, etc. Why did you know, the book is called and the re- I named the show after your book, The Forgiveness Solution. So uh, everybody that's listening so you'll know why that's called and he said okay. So why did you write this book, The Forgiveness Solution and how did you come to write it? Well, actually, it goes back, uh, believe it or not, 30 or 40 years before I got into forgiveness. I had some powerful, actual psychic and spiritual experiences that started me on kind of a search into yoga and meditation, parapsychology, things like that, curling photography. And uh, actually, a friend of mine was president of the local Delaware Valley Society of Parapsychology and invited a gentleman named Doug Dean to give a presentation on curling and photography, which I was very interested in and actually doing a little myself. And at the end of the presentation, he says to me, oh, I want to talk about something um, completely different now. He says, I want to talk about some... uh, writing.